At the end of the day, you wasn't never my friend, best friend, dog, none of that. If like we fall out over something we could have had a conversation about welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is giselle vinya don't forget to like share subscribe and turn on your bell notifications so you don't miss a post today we're diving into a topic that is all too relatable for many of us women fake friends we all want to surround ourselves with genuine supportive people but unfortunately sometimes we end up being friends with people who aren't quite as they seem so how do you spot a fake friend stick around as we discuss the signs and share some insights to navigate who your real friends are without further ado let's get into the video at the end of the day you wasn't never my friend best friend dog none of that if like we fall out over something we could have had a conversation about baby let me tell you something that girl is not your friend everything you tell that girl guess what she does she goes and tell her man and right after she tell her man she tells her other friends and when she tell her other friends her other friends tell they other friends before you know what your whole business is out there in the streets that's crazy and then when you look at your friend and you're like well how did they know this when you're the only person that i told they look at you sideways like well i didn't say nothing then bitch who did pay attention to how your friends react when you send them something to react to get mm-hmm Remember, jealousy comes in jokes. Pay attention to what she's joking about. Sis, if she says this to you, they're not really your friend. Hi, hello, it's Anne. Let's go. One, if they know that you're trying to get over somebody and you don't want to hear anything about them, but they come up to you and they're like, hey, I saw your ex today. Like, okay, keep that to yourself, please. It is when they try to entertain other people by making fun of you, but not only that, it's when they start making fun of the things that they know you're extremely insecure about. And three, I know guys do this with their guy friends and that's fine, but I think for us ladies, it's a little different. It's when your friend knows that you like somebody, so they try to embarrass you in front of that crush. And sometimes, if not all the time, it just goes a little too far. Here's the thing. I wouldn't have done it to you. And that's why I can't get past it, so. Come on now. You've been that. <laughs> you better just own up to it at this point. Did y'all see that TikTok of this Congolese girl saying that she had gotten a promotion and her group of friends were like, okay, like, let's go out and celebrate, like, you know, dinner or drinks or something like that. And so they all go out and she goes to the bathroom and then apparently one of the friends poisoned her drink, bro. Poison. And I guess there was this guy and he was a little bit drunk, but she was walking back from the bathroom and he caught her and he said, hey, don't drink the drink. Your friend put something in it, right? And then I guess the friends are there and they're hearing what's happening. And the friend is like, absolutely not. Like, da, 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 and she like curses him out or, you know, yells at him. And then the friends are like, well, if there's nothing wrong with the drink, you drink it. And then this bitch is silent, obviously. And then apparently they basically like try to force her to drink it to the point where she has to like fight them off and be like, um, actually, yeah, I did poison her and I'm so mad that she always gets all the jobs and all of the good things and yada, yada, yada. I saw this in a Twitter thread, but it was on here on TikTok. I'm just floored like the lengths people will go through to like see you fail and to like aid in your demise. All of this to say that like you really do have to watch the reactions of your friends when good things happen to you to see who is secretly like hating on you and who is genuinely happy and there to celebrate your win. And I think it's one thing, I think we've all been there before when we've been like maybe jealous of seeing somebody else's successes because we feel like we're not in the place that we should be and they're like ahead of us. I think that's like definitely a human trait. But to go as far as poisoning your friend, you're willing to risk jail time because a cone girl got a good job? Like are you dumb or are you stupid? Please make sure you're paying attention. Please make sure that you're not giving people the benefit of the doubt who have never earned that benefit of the doubt. When you see people copying you, that sometimes means that they want to be you. Not every time, don't, don't, don't get a big head, but like there are sometimes people that really will copy everything you do because they want to be you and because they may be jealous of you and they may want everything you have. And when I mean they want everything you have, I mean everything you specifically have. So you need to watch out because people will steal your boyfriends, people will steal your jobs, people will try to steal your family, your friends, everything, your house. So please be careful, please be vigilant, and make sure that you know who you can and cannot share your wins with because people are really rooting for your downfall. Let's talk about the neutral friends some more because a lot of y'all are in my comments acting dense on purpose. Let's just clear one thing up. If you have two friends who just don't get along with each other, 
and they're just not compatible, like, that is not you being a neutral friend. That's just you having two different friends, babe, okay? Being a neutral friend is when you have two friends who have beef with each other because one friend did the other friend dirty, and you're just, like, ignoring the drama, you're acting like it, it has nothing to do with you, when technically it really does have something to do with you. And this is why I feel like loyalty is valued so little nowadays, because if your friend was done wrong by somebody, that, that, that has something to do with you. Your friend is supposed to be somebody that you care about. And when someone hurts a person that you care about, you don't go and be friendly with that person. Like, it's a really simple concept. And I feel like y'all are purposely trying to make it difficult to avoid being called what you are, which is fake. And let me clarify, because I'm not talking about high school drama, you guys. I'm talking about grown women. I'm grown, okay? If you're in this situation and you're in, in high school, like, it's going to go a lot differently than grown-ass women. I'm not talking about grown-ass women. If y'all are grown and mature, y'all should be able to have a conversation, talk about the issues, you feel me? But if the beef can't be squashed, like, you being the neutral friend, you're going to have to eventually pick a side because somebody was done wrong somebody was did dirty by the other person and i don't know why you feel like if they did them dirty they're not going to do you dirty too like why are you being friendly with people who do their friends dirty in the first place that's weird and if they both did each other dirty like i would just cut them both off because again i'm not going to be friends with people that do their friends dirty i just feel like too many people take the friend word way too lightly like, y'all be calling people y'all's friends, but then when somebody does them dirty, you don't care. You're still over there being friendly with them. Like, that is so weird, and it's embarrassing that y'all are out here proudly saying, I'm the neutral friend. Like, please, baby, just call them your acquaintance. That is not your friend. That is not your friend, because why are you kicking and buddied up with the person that hurt them? Like, make that make sense. Make it make sense. Like, y'all need to just reevaluate what you even consider a friend. Because there's no way on earth I'm going to be key keying with somebody that fucked over my friend just because they didn't do anything to me. That is weird. Y'all do not know what loyalty is, and it's actually scary. And it actually makes a lot of sense as to why so many of us have so little friends nowadays. Watch people. Because you can fake for a long time, but one day you're going to show yourself to be a phony. Yes, that's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what these, you know, a lot of people are doing these days reminder that she did not want to be your friend she wanted to be you and for you know i'm seeing more and more conversation among women about suspecting that their friends might be copying them i attribute this to certain tv shows and i want to bring us back to reality for a second there are positive and negative forms of imitation if a person's openly asking you for pointers or something or directly telling you that they bought an outfit because you bought it, then it's less likely that it's a negative form of imitation. We consciously and subconsciously imitate people as a sign of admiration, as an attempt at connection, and in some cases as an attempt to fit in with the observed norms in an environment. But yes, there are more sinister forms of imitation as well. Trying to steal your partner, mimicking your vocabulary, taking credit for your idea. Perhaps they're envious and they believe that copying you will lead them to achieving the same things that you have. It also points to an underdeveloped sense of self. And on rare occasions, an actual mental health issue. Learn the difference between the two before you run around being unnecessarily paranoid of your friends. That girl is not your friend. Friends who switch up on you when you're around other people or they're around other people, take how they treat you as how they actually feel about you. The low maintenance friend. So I don't have an issue with the low maintenance friend. My only problem is, can you guys please go be low maintenance somewhere else? Because one thing about the low maintenance girly, she's going to require high maintenance friendship from you. Suddenly, when it's their turn to receive the friendship, you must now be high maintenance and show up for them. How can I be giving 30% and expecting 70% from you? That is not a good business move. That is not a profit. We're not working at a profit. If anything, we are working at a loss. So if you're going to be a low maintenance friend, do not expect high maintenance behavior from your other friends. The friend who doesn't know how to clap for you when you win. I call them the low key envious friends. These little friends that will never acknowledge any of your achievements, any of your wins, and they don't know how to celebrate with you. 
Another sign of this type of friend is the friend that is always there when you are going through the most down bad. She has front row tickets to the ship sinking, but when it's time to pop champagne and celebrate, she is nowhere to be seen. Be careful of the people who love to watch you in your misery, but never want to be there and present in your highest and happiest moments. That is a dangerous, envious, low-key envious friend. Lastly, when it comes to friendships, trust your intuition. Trust your guts. If you feel like your friend is talking bad about you, is not being a good friend towards you, is jealous of you, is even trying to steal your man, please be careful and take your instincts as if they are Bible. Because one thing about your gut, baby, it never lies. I can't stop thinking about a conversation I had with a client. And I thought, somebody else needs to hear this because it took me way too many years to learn this. And ladies, that's because of my codependency. It's taken me so long in different stages of healing my codependency. And so sweetie's always like, I don't want to interrupt your videos. So I'll try to make this quick because at this point it could be a full workshop because I'm so passionate about it. And I keep hearing about this more and more frequently, especially as women are rising up. So on the empowerment journey, many women who were people pleasing codependents, they began healing, taking their power back. Men got a lot of press for a long time women married to narcissists, leaving those toxic marriages. But now I'm hearing more and more frequently about female friendships with narcissists. Hmm, do I know all about that. So taking ownership, that's part of the empowerment journey, no longer placing blame outside of ourselves. So healing that codependency, the veil is lifted, right? So a client, several clients have mentioned when they're with their friend, it feels competitive. Like that friend has got competitive energy with them. It's not a friend. Also, if you feel like immediately in their presence, you have to shrink so that they feel propped up and everything has to be their way. That is not a friend. That is straight up narcissist. I mean, this could be a whole tiff talk. I'm so passionate about it because I know how painful it is because female friendships can be complicated enough. So fall madly in love with yourself. Know who you are. So a client, I just remember a client also said that she didn't really like who she was when she was with this friend. So when you remain sovereign in who you are, the truth of who you are, what do I say? You self abandon, you step out of yourself to be what somebody else needs. You literally in that moment, abandon yourself. Stop it. What is the smallest social slight someone can do to you that's actually a big deal to you? Now this is a small thing, but it literally screams, this is how I feel about you. And it's when you're around a group of people and every time someone accomplishes something, they post or celebrate and congratulate that person. But when it comes to you and your accomplishments, nothing. Now this is something that I learned in the art world. And it's that when you care about people, their wins feel like your wins. And so when they succeed at something, you not only congratulate that person, but you also celebrate that person. And when you see them doing that for each other, but they don't do that for you, it's because they don't feel that way about you. Now what this means is that they don't support you. And if you need an example of what this looks like in real life, think about when someone's kid accomplishes something. What is the first thing people do? They get online and they blast it out for everyone to see. Look at what my kid has done. I'm so proud of my little Jimmy because their child's success feels like their own. And you'll notice that people also do that for their close friends and people that they support. So if they're not doing that for you too, then that means you're not around your people. And it seems like y'all like when I tell my life stories on here. So if you wanna hear my personal examples with this, just comment down below and I will make a video for it.
if you low-key don't like you like you know deep down they move on funny i have like so many friends who've been like low-key haters and these are the things that they typically do when they don't like you like that i think the first one for me is always gonna be them backhanded compliment people who are haters they will find any way to insult you take a jab at you hurt your feelings and then laugh it off like it's a joke like but for, be for real like they'll try to make you feel like you're not that girl like you just mad basic mad blah and it's just like you're supposed to be my friend you're supposed to be gassing each other up why why are you hating for it? like the next time for me is when they don't invite you out to places like they purposely leave you out and exclude you from like everything they'll invite everybody out to a little social gathering they will purposely exclude you if they make it like they life mission to exclude you from things and to make you feel left out the third one for me is going to be something I like to call energy vampires. They will suck the living daylights out of you when it comes to asking you for help. They basically like use you. They use you for everything. But when you ask them, you know, to reciprocate, oh, they're gone. You cannot find them. They pull a Houdini. Adios. In my personal opinion, a friendship should be mutual. It shouldn't be one person just taking, 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 and one person just giving, giving, giving. We should equally pour and take out of each other. Y'all make sure you're not friends with no hater. Like, that's not cute. You don't need them in your life. You're not nobody's fan. You're not, they're not a celebrity. You're not chasing up behind them. Just get rid of them and keep pushing. Okay? The people that insult you as a joke, drop them now. Because one, if you're going to insult me through a joke, it better be funny. And they're usually as disappointing as Dream's face reveal. No one's laughing. I'm just like... And the fact that you got comfortable that you thought you disrespected me in public was cool. But when the joke don't hit, they apologize to you in private? There's a lot of reasons why adult friendships, particularly adult friendships between women, fall apart. But well, one thing I've realized, the common denominator amongst a lot of these fractures or breakups are the girls' trips. One of my previous TikToks has my whole little spiel about how, you know, I broke up with a friend because of how she was behaving during a girls' trip. And that seemed to ignite a lot of women and said, yeah, most of my friendships or the friendships that I had where someone was behaving like this it was after spending this significant amount of time with them on the trip. They were just sour. They were bitter. They were, you know, they were just a depressive mood. And I think what's going on is these individuals were wearing a mask. And when we see them out in public, whether it's in dinner or shopping or these little day trips, they can hold the mask up for the day but they eventually go home and they can take the mask off when you do these girls trips they never have the opportunity to take the mask off and recharge so that's why we're seeing all this cuckoo crazy on girls trips because many times we think it's coming out of nowhere but the reality is that every once in a while they take the mask off for a breather and those are usually the yellow flags or maybe even the red flags but we give it a pass because we understand people are human and people have their moments and, you know, you can just give someone some grace. But these trips are the catalyst to people really exposing themselves for what they are. So ladies and gentlemen, but particularly ladies, be careful. You deleted your Instagram account for like a month. You'd really see who's your friend versus who's not. Like some of y'all are in one-sided friendships that are not genuine. People don't care about you like that. People are not checking in on you like that. It's very just like not mutual and it's sad. You don't reach out to them. Y'all never link. If you don't make the effort, y'all never hang out. And it's just like, but why is that the standard for friendships nowadays? That's mad weird to me. Like if a social media app is the only thing keeping your friendship alive with somebody, then were y'all really even friends? to begin with people always ask me why don't you got an instagram and my response is always because i don't need one <laughs> number one i don't really feel the need to be constantly updated on people's lives who i don't talk to like that number two i feel like my friendships are more genuine because in order to contact me and to stay in touch you actually have to pick up the phone and call me and link me and make plans and that is how a friendship should be like i don't have a lot of friends but the quality of my friendships are a one because we really both devote the time to pour into each other and to maintain the friendship and that is what really is a real friendship. We should make time to talk and to see each other, not me click your story and then that's how I'm updated on your life. That's weird to me.
How do y'all are terrible friends and don't even realize it? First of all, if I'm going through stuff and I just is myself and I don't want to be bothered, that's not your business. Don't call me fake for that. Me personally, I just feel like we too grown to be talking every single day of our life. Like there is real adult stuff going on. Like we are in a crisis. I do not feel like talking to you every day. That's fine. But I still love you. I still want to be friends with you. But leave me alone. Also, stop telling your friend's business to your other friends. That's very fake. If I'm even telling you my business in the first place, obviously I see you as a real friend. But for you to go sit there and tell your other friends my business... You won't never hear another secret from me again. And secret animosity, especially with female friendships. If you're jealous of somebody, why are you friends with them? Stop wasting each other's time. And that goes into my next part. A lot of y'all are very unsupportive. Like, if my friends say they want to go walk the moon tomorrow, I'm like, send pics, sis. Like, send pics. Be supportive. Just support your friends. It doesn't matter how far-fetched the goal is because you never know if it'll be achieved or not. It's how to tell if she's really not your friend. If she accidentally tells people your business because she didn't know she wasn't supposed to say anything, that's not your friend. If she treats you different when her other friends are around, she acts different when guys are around. If her mood changes when you tell her good news, if she's constantly going out of her way to talk to people that you like, if she's making jokes at your expense, or if she'll subtly try to humble you, you could say something like, oh my gosh, I love my hair today. And they'll say something like, I couldn't really tell the difference. Watch out for them because they are not your people thank you for watching and if you made it to the end of this video let's keep the conversation going down in the chat below what was a time that you learned that you had a fake friend and how do you go about making friends now so for me i will definitely say that it's hard for me to make friends and I honestly am more to myself. I like to keep my business to myself because I have had poor interactions with some women in the past. But a part of me does desire friendships and I honestly don't know how to go about curating them. But the beauty of this online platform is that I get to interact with you ladies and gentlemen and learn from one another and hear you guys' stories. Anyways, thank you for tuning in. May the Lord bless and protect all of y'all until next time bye focus on me